Welcome to Defense Upcast, your weekly deep dive into the technology, strategy, and geopolitics shaping tomorrow's world. In the skies above South Asia, a new arms race is taking shape. India just deployed one of the world's most lethal fighter jets, the French-made Rafale. It can strike before you see it coming. It can dominate the air in ways few aircraft can match. And now, Bangladesh is looking for an answer. They're calling it the Rafale killer. But can a smaller nation with a fraction of the budget actually counter one of the most advanced fighters on the planet? The answer isn't just about technology. It's about strategy, geopolitics, and survival. This is the story of how Bangladesh is navigating one of the most critical defense decisions in its history. To understand why Bangladesh is even thinking about a Rafal killer, you need to understand the neighborhood. Bangladesh sits in one of the most strategically complex regions on Earth. To the west and north, India, a regional superpower with the fourth largest air force in the world. To the east, Myanmar, a nation with its own military ambitions and a history of border tensions. For decades, Bangladesh maintained a modest air force, older Chinese aircraft, some refurbished fighters, enough to defend but never to dominate. That strategy worked until it didn't. In September 2020, everything changed. India received its first squadron of Dassault Rafale fighters, a game-changing platform that redefined air superiority in South Asia. The Rafale isn't just a fighter jet, it's a multi-role beast, advanced ASA radar that can track dozens of targets. Simultaneously, Meteor Beyond Visual Range missiles with a range of over 150 kilometers, electronic warfare suites that can jam enemy radars. Precision strike capabilities that can hit ground targets with surgical accuracy, India ordered 36 Rafales in a deal worth nearly $9 billion, and they positioned them strategically, close to both Pakistan and China. But their presence also sends a message to smaller neighbors. The balance of power has shifted. For Bangladesh, this wasn't just a military upgrade next door. It was an existential question. How do we defend our airspace against a fighter that advanced? The answer? Find a counter. Find a Rafale killer. So what exactly is a Rafale killer? It's not about matching the Rafale feature for feature. That would cost billions Bangladesh doesn't have. Instead, it's about finding a platform that can neutralize the Rafale's advantages through smart. Tactics, lower cost, and the right technology. Let's break down the contenders. Option 1. The Chengdu J-10C, China. Bangladesh already operates Chinese fighters, so this would be a natural fit. The J-10C is China's answer to Western 4.5-generation jets. It features an AESA radar, can carry the PL-15 long-range missile, one of the best in the world, and it's significantly cheaper than Western alternatives. Cost? Around $40 to $50 million per unit. Compare that to the Rafale's $240 million flyaway cost. Bangladesh could buy four or five J-10Cs for the price of one Rafale. But here's the catch. The J-10C has never been tested in real combat. Its electronics are improving, but they still lag behind Western and French systems. And politically, buying from China deepens dependency on Beijing, something India watches very closely. Option 2. The Sukhoi Su-30 SME, Russia Russia has been a defense partner to Bangladesh for years. The Su-30 family is legendary. Massive twin engine. Beasts with incredible range and payload capacity. The SME variant is an upgraded version with modern avionics and improved radar. It's a proven platform. It's intimidating, and it can carry a lot of firepower. But it's also expensive to maintain. Russian jets require constant upkeep, and spare parts can be a nightmare. And with Russia currently under heavy Western sanctions, long-term support becomes a serious gamble. Option 3, the Eurofighter Typhoon, Europe. Now we're talking about a true Rafale competitor. The Typhoon is a European consortium fighter, Britain, Germany, Italy, Spain. It's fast. It's agile. It has proven itself in NATO operations. The Typhoon and Rafale are often compared directly. In air-to-air -air combat, many analysts give the Typhoon a slight edge in speed and climb rate. It's equipped with advanced sensors and can carry the Meteor missile, the same weapon the Rafale uses. But, and this is a big but, the Typhoon is expensive. Very expensive. Not Rafale expensive, but close. And European nations rarely sell to South Asian countries without strings attached. Would Britain or Germany risk upsetting India, a major strategic partner, by selling top-tier fighters to Bangladesh? 
unlikely. Option 4. The JF-17 Block 3, Pakistan, China. This is the dark horse. The JF-17 is a lightweight single-engine fighter jointly developed by Pakistan and China. It's affordable, around $25 to $30 million per unit, and the Block 3 variant just got a major upgrade, ASA radar, improved avionics, and compatibility with modern Chinese missiles. Pakistan has been pushing the JF-17 hard in international markets. It's combat-tested. Pakistan used it to shoot down Indian aircraft in 2019 during a border skirmish. That's a proven record. But buying from Pakistan would be politically explosive. Bangladesh and Pakistan have a painful shared history. The 1971 Liberation War left deep scars. Would Bangladesh's public accept a fighter from Islamabad? That's not just a military question, it's a national identity question. So which one is the real Rafale killer? Here's the truth. There isn't one. Not really. The Rafale is simply too advanced to be killed by a cheaper alternative in a one-on-one -on -one fight. But air warfare isn't fought one-on-one. -on -one. It's fought in systems. Bangladesh doesn't need to beat the Rafale. It needs to make the cost of aggression too high. That means integrated air defense systems, networked radar coverage, long-range surface-to-air missiles, and a fighter that can exploit the Rafale's weaknesses, cost, limited numbers, and operational tempo. If Bangladesh buys 16 J-10Cs or JF-17, Block 3s, they could field multiple squadrons for the price of a handful of Rafales. They could stretch India's air defense, force difficult decisions, and create strategic uncertainty. That's the real game, not killing the Rafale, just making it think twice. But this decision isn't just about fighters. It's about Bangladesh's place in a rapidly shifting world. China is expanding its influence across South Asia. The United States is trying to counter that through partnerships with India. Russia is struggling under sanctions, and Europe is increasingly wary of upsetting New Delhi. Every fighter jet purchase is a geopolitical signal. By Chinese, you signal alignment with Beijing. You invite Indian scrutiny. You risk Western disapproval. By Russian, you tie your future to a weakened power under sanction. By European, you probably can't, but if you could, you'd send a message of Western alignment that might not sit well with your largest neighbor. By Pakistani Chinese, you save money and get proven tech, but you reopen old wounds. And beyond the geopolitics, there's the human factor. Bangladesh is a developing nation. The same money spent on fighters could build schools, hospitals, infrastructure. Every defense dollar is a dollar not spent on development. But here's the counter-argument. Without credible. Defense, there is no development. Without sovereignty, there is no future. And in South Asia, where borders are contested and histories are bloody, air power isn't optional. Bangladesh's leaders are walking a tightrope. They need to deter threats without provoking them. They need to modernize without bankrupting the nation. They need to balance global powers without becoming a pawn. The Rafale killer isn't just a fighter jet, it's a symbol of a nation trying to find its footing in a dangerous world. So what will Bangladesh choose? As of now, no final decision has been made. Negotiations are ongoing, offers are being evaluated, and the world is watching. What we do know is this. The era of Bangladesh as a passive player in South Asian military. Affairs is over. Whether they choose the J-10C, the Su-30, the JF-17, or something else entirely, the message is clear. Bangladesh is no longer willing to sit quietly while its neighbors arm to the teeth. The Rafale killer may not exist in the way headlines suggest, but the idea of it? That's already changing the calculus of power in the region. In the end, the best weapon isn't always the most advanced. Sometimes it's the one that makes your adversary hesitate, the one that shifts the math, the one that says, we're ready, are you? And in the skies above South Asia, that question is now hanging in the air.